Morrow Mondays is back with episode 10, season 2, BOOM! And we kick off Jimmy O! First appearance of, you gotta believe it brother, Jimmy O Fally. My question is though, should they be called Morrow Mondays or should they be called Mick Mondays? Mick Mondays, do you like it? I like it. Anyway, yeah, the first appearance of Jimmy O Um we've, we've heard about him before, it's not the first technical, like, it's not his debut in the show, you know, we have heard of him, but it's the first time we see him. On screen. Yes, and the second fact is Jax becomes the first member to leave the club, but we'll get into that a wee bit later on in the episode. And kicking off the episode with the first fact, Quinn is on the phone too. The Quinn, we're getting introduced. Well, yeah, Quinn's on the phone to Clay. Clay, so Clay, we get... We Quinn tuned in to see Morrow Monday. He did. Oh, and we Monday. get the debut, the first mention of Quinn. We don't get to see him, we don't get to hear him, but we know there's a guy called Quinn and he's alive and he's the leader of the Nomad Charter. And he Boom. says that he will accept Jax's transfer as the what son. What else are they going to say? No, I don't want Jax, he's pish. I know, why, I know, why would he, why would he turn in Jackie boy? I don't really understand this. But essentially, we've got Opie Bobby here. Clay brings up the point that the vote will have to be unanimous. At this point, is he getting a unanimous vote? Or do you feel like Jack's going to have to do a bit of talking? Well, see, I, I don't get it, man. There's so many people that don't want Jax to leave yet. As we can see later on in the episode, they kind of just all like reluctantly agree. Could argue... They're doing what Jax wants, but I mean, fuck that. I think that's a bullshit argument. I don't like that. I don't like it. Jax, so has to solidify his uh, piney no foot. Or, yes? What, what was it? Was, uh, they said yes. It wasn't no. They said yes. So, piney. Jack sho- said yeah. Jack shows up, right? Piney's at his house, and it's just. You just know it reeks a pish in there. There is no two ways about it. It just reeks a stale pish. And bet you whiskey. Alcohol. Yep. Pish B-O. whiskey. Mm. And all, and all that good stuff but yeah basically Piney's like no you can't go you promised me you'd sort this Donna mess out but right why does Piney put so much weight on Jack's shoulders right I get it right he's, he's like the, just one man he's yeah. heir to the throne right he's John Teller's wee man and well he's, if he's handing in his I, well, yeah but that's my point right but like what's Piney actually did to help Jack this season he uh, fucks off every time he gets uh, oh I sat in that chair for 10 years what, what'd they do if you don't like the club fuck off I rode my limit. What, 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 what he rode his limit? What what was his limit? I rode smelling well, a whiskey. Well, let, let's be real, right? So whiskey bar. I believe he, I believe he became VP when JT died, which makes it ninety three, right? Which is fifteen years before this, or sixteen years actually before he says this line. So what age would that make Piney? He takes sixteen years off him. He might be pretty young, wouldn't he? Like, I mean, well, I say he's pretty young. Like, he well, would, not young. He, he would be old and decrepit. Like, what age would you say he is in the show? I'd say he's about seventy. At this point, he's about 70. I don't know if he's that old, to be honest with you. He's best friends with JT. Who I, died when he was 53. I can't imagine... So therefore... I'd say he's more like mid-60s. But JT died when he was 53. This is 16 years later. Therefore, add 16 years, you get 69. Right, he's oh, about he's around re- late 60s, early 70s. Oh, so in, on, in that case, then, what age do you think Clay is? Well, Clay's about 10 years younger. Is he? Yeah. And what age is Gemma, then? Gemma's 53 in season one. So was JT like a cradle snatcher then? A pedo? Well, no, but according to you, if we did your maths, then Gemma's about 17 years. Well, she did say that. She was 18. My JT. What age was JT? JT, take a seat. Take a seat, damn it. But anyway, right, point is, Piney shouldn't be moaning about having to ride his limit, but... But wait, also, it's like, I feel like the show at times will tell you that um, Piney and JT were best friends. And then in other parts, I'll tell you that... I like Jury a bit too. I'll tell you that Clay and um, JT were best friends, but then it says, like, Jury was his best... Oh, we were best friends. I wasn't in the club, so he could tell me anything. I mean, like, how many best friends does this JT guy have? But know the funny thing is? I'm, I think some people's interpretations of best friends is, like, you only have one. But in, I think in other countries and other cultures... And, you can have multiple. No, I could. Uh, I, I do believe that. But yeah, right. Piney. Well, best friends then and not friend, isn't it? Piney so, basically laughs off Jack's suggestion saying, who are you going to trust your father's legacy? Tig, Bobby, those clowns. I feel a bit unnecessary for him to bury Bobby. I don't see how Tig's a clown either. Tig does the heart. Tig is willing to do the stuff that a lot of people don't. He's not willing to do dirty work, as uh, Meryl Dixon would call it. I think Tig's Tig, very reactive. I don't think he suits being president, personally. Probably not. But, but I wouldn't he, describe him as a clown. I think he's very loyal. Uh, it's not off. I wouldn't say he really goes off the rails. I think he's... 
I'm like, Kenny did. He's, trying, he's, off, he's like, off the rails fucking every time he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> he's been derailed, Tuggy. But yeah, no, I don't really like Bobby, if anything. Bobby's, a lot of times Bobby tries to come across as like, you know, the, 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 the glue that keeps the group together. He tries to come across as the peacemaker. I know he, he does the he does the crucial thoughts. He, he does the tax he scores the, he, sco- he scores the equalizers. You know what I mean? He, he, he bangs the uh, brother's fucking locked up brother's dead wife. So I mean, what a guy! Know. But yeah, anyway. I, I didn't really understand that, Penny. I, I can, if you're if you want to be a bit critical of Teg, I can understand why you would be. But I don't really know what Bobby's done in the opening season and a half to like get. That kind of, I don't know. Maybe Piney's just watched him from afar for the past 20 years and went, this guy's quite pish. Oh, does he mean maybe when I say, that's me. (laughs) Maybe he means when he dresses up as Elvis. It's not a good impersonation, (laughs) Jack. (laughs) That clown Elvis Presley, he took a dump and he died in the toilet. Opie shows up, Jax, he tells Jax that, um... He's your father, man. And he's like, no, my, my daddy died 16 years ago, brother. So, yeah. Old people try and fire this line again this episode, but he'll say it to a different person. But uh, Chibs comes out in his wheelchair says, Abracada! And then Happy's like, uh, Jax, do you want these uh, nomad papers, mate? And he's like, fuck off. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want these nomad papers. Thoughts on that? It's like the first time you see Happy get properly shot down. Isn't it? Not now, Happy. Not now. Fuck off, you born bastard. What? what? I, I I felt like Happy got treated like a prospect here, like big time. No, he did. I'm, surpri- I'm surprised he didn't turn <laughs> Jax into a fucking smiley face. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe he went got a sad face tattoo after this. Because Jax kind of did shoot him down. Like I tell you what, well, well, where's Clay at this wee fucking reunion? Clay's too busy making... He wants to find AKs and shotguns. Uh, that's pretty much it. But uh, yeah, Prospect... Half sack gives Chibs a lift home. He's basically filling Chibs in on what, what's happening. Uh, basically, Cara Cara burnt down. He's like, what? Who? And, and then he's on about, right, I so bell and all. They've did that to you. Jax is going nomad. He's like, nomad? Take a lift. <laughs> Take a lift, no. I mean, what happens if there, were no, if there were no nowhere near this building he wanted to go to? He's like, ah, yeah, right, let me get the fucking GPS. Get yeah. Take a, uh, a left, a right, three turns down here. Third right, 100 metres, then boom, we're at, we're at the place. But he shows up, he whips his gun out, points it at Edmund, shoots. Now, people may think he's a poor shot. No, I think he was just going for like... Ah, he was trying to scare him. Like, mm. Yep, grabs and he's like, explain to me why you make bastards are selling guns to the pieces of shit that blew me up. Long line, but good line. Yeah, a yeah, great line. But, I mean, he kind of grabs the guy that doesn't really have much... He's just kind of there, isn't he, though? I don't think Edward's really in any position to be going into a long conversation about why they're selling guns to these people. Yeah. But, again, at this point... No, this is kind of like a crony, isn't it? Be like, that's not like someone grabbing half sack. Why did you fought for... Reti- why did you guys fought retaliation? You know, it's like, I mean, half sack's like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> that's somebody else. I know, but no, those, those are intriguing. The ATF have already got this place tapped. No, I thought they had... Did not have someone tapped? No, I mean... That not have chips tapped? No, not at this point. They've got they've got the place tapped because they hear the entire conversation. And, and, that's, how, and that's how Stall finds out the Jax is going nomad. Are you sure wasn't? I know I know they had it tapped, but did they not like have something else? Because ta- like you said, if they knew he was, if they knew Cameron Hayes was in there, they went went to move on. Although, thingy at the end of the episode, Stall kind of does suggest that. She could get Cameron Hayes if she wants to. I think. I, I think what the whole gimmick is—they're trying to gather evidence against him. Ah, so if they move, then they're not going to get any. Because of course, the whole gimmick is I—they oh, need to catch them delivering shipments. Blah blah blah. But again, because but again, Cameron Hayes is wanted. So again, you could just arrest him, but then if you arrest him, it blows the whole thing up. But um, big Cameron Hayes comes in with double barrel shotgun. Let him go, Chibs. And then Jax walks in, Jimmy O walks in, you think, how many fucking people's going to, well, you know. I, I was sh- expecting Runza to walk in without using the door here. I know. F- Teleportation, Runza. Things went south when McKeevy died, brother. Chucky Arla. <laughs> what you need it is, you need it, Clay busting through the front door with AKs and shotguns. Fucking the shotgun when he shows up to kill Frankie with his fucking sunglasses on. <laughs> Clay, it seems you're not. That Clay kind of reminded me of the Terminator. Like, it was just a hell bent on fucking taking Frankie out, like, wasn't he? No, he, he, he did. He was, fucking, he was on a mission. Um, basically, Mon- monkey on a mission. Basically, Sam Crow begins the retreat. Chibs says to Jax, "You know my VP anymore? 
Just like no Jackson's mind. been saying to Clay, you're not my daddy anymore. <laughs> not anymore. Uh, Stoll then's like, you know what? Let's press the Scott because he, he's definitely going to rat Jack's return. He's got brain damage. Let's press him. Jack's returns home and who's there? It's Stoll. Basically threatens him to give up the Irish again. He's like, no, I'm not doing it. And yeah, this was kind of like a weak attempt for Stoll, wasn't it? Ah, uh, she was, uh, it was. Uh, I think she was testing the waters, like you know. I mean. Aye, she's like, oh, he's going no mad. Oh, I'll see what's happening here. Open half sack, uh, re- repossess a uh, old SUV. Turns out the, the the it's actually loaded with uh, bullets. Which then we get clay. Tig. Yeah, like, see, no, ma- no matter how pissed Jack says, like, I just don't think he's ever going to give up the club. Like, no, that hmm. no, that de- definitely not. But basically, here, right, we've got we've got Nat- Native Americans, the Indians, or uh, damn bullets. And they're then on Gahiba land, so therefore they cannot be prosecuted because they, they actually supply... The what a loophole that is, like, I mean, seriously. I know, that, that, is a, that is a massive... No, but that's a, that's a legit thing. Is that, like, is, that, is that like saying you're allowed to take, like, iron brew and cocaine in Scotland because you're on fucking holy Scottish land? And the iron brew's getting consumed with... Cocaine. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, I, I, just, I, I just don't get that, like, I mean... Is that, oh, is there certain fucking land you're, where murder's okay because you're, you're doing it on the... I, I don't know. But there they go, you say white privilege, this was Native American privilege. God damn right, Chibs uh, drives away in the fan, he's had enough of... Well, if you're black, you can pretty much rob whatever fucking... You can rob shoes and shit and nothing happens to you, so... Black nation. Clown world. Oh, and does Sabelle's trying to rise up against this shit? He, maybe, I think Sabelle could see into the future. Could he? Oh, I think he could see what was going to happen to America, and he thought, nah, I need to put, a, I need to put an end to this right here. So right what now. you're saying is Leroy ain't in the gun business, he's in the shoes business? Yeah, well, he probably gets the gun so he can rob the shoes. Nike's Air Force. Oh, he's allowed to do it, but right, Chibs gets surrounded here by ATF stalls. Like, basically, does a clay on Elliot. Says, "I give you a wee reminder on your face." Like, oh, thanks for that wee trip down memory lane, big man. No, this, this Elliot, this is the knife. But yeah, used. Chibs uh, ain't, ain't having it. He's like, no, I'm no ratting, big man. But we get a few scenes where Jack basically goes round like you get Gemma speaking to him you get um, Juice but going Nomad Juice is like we're your family this chart is your home brother Juice kind of forgets that logic you know, in two was, seasons time yeah, doesn't he though I wasn't really feeling this I felt like I felt like Juice was trying to you know get all emotional hey Jack remember what you told me but I, I didn't really buy it yeah it's I a, felt forced like or just felt it felt in there I wasn't feeling it See if I was Jax. It didn't feel forced, no, but to me, Jax did not give one fuck. Yeah, that's what saying. I mean. Like, see if I was Jax, what Juice said wouldn't even have contemplated me change my mind here. But you know, it's like, I, I'd, I'd be more willing to change my mind if it was Finn Diesel lying in the hospital bed. I went, come on, Jax, it's all about the family. It's all about the family, you know, son, do it. I, no, I, don't just, I just don't think Juice was very convincing here. And it's like, hey, Jax, remember what you told me? This charter's your family. It just, I don't know, it didn't really... Been there really day it for me, big man. Uh, Chibs shows up at the the Irish steam. Yeah, we, we we all wish we could change our family over the years, like so. Exactly, but the Irish steam pub it is. Uh, Jimmy basically says to uh, Chibs that they need to get the uh, the gun business back running with uh, Sam Crow. But Chibs like go to hell, Jimmy, and he's like, "We've seen any recent pictures of our Fiona?" And uh, Chibs is fucking Chibs his head goes here, just stares at him oh, for a second. Oh, she's solid. looking great and all that stuff. That, I mean, I don't know what age Fiona is in the show. She's not seventeen. No, that's his wife. Oh, uh, no! He never said Fiona. He said Kellyanne. Kellyanne. That's what oh, I'm you saying. You said Fiona. I, will, right, I meant Kellyanne. You threw me off. You threw me off. I think she's. I think she's younger. I'd say she's about fourteen, which makes Jimmy Hill even fucking nonsense than what he needs he, to be. He's, he's talking about her breasts and all this shit. He's like. Oh, well, hold on! He, he's on about her breasts popping. She can't be fucking seventeen because that make that's just no, that doesn't happen. Well, I don't know how biology works, like, but yeah, you're probably right. And anyway, he's, he's talking about like it's like, um, yeah, you know, she's like growing into a woman, and I can't do a good Irish accent. Then he's talking about uh, Fio- top of the morning. Know, Fiona looks are fading their chips, you know, like. But Curry and wow, you know the the <laughs> thought, the, 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 the thoughts that enter my mind are <laughs> are not pure. They're impure. And then I remember she's not really my daughter, Chibs. Even if she does call me daddy, and that, I thought it was just great, man. Honestly, this I think this could have been quote cool the episode. But a, <laughs> Chibs a, it a, a, it was too long, and B, it was too pedoey. So <laughs> but apart from that, it was like fucking quote. Cool and episode. he was already taking a fucking seat. Aye. Then Chibs grabs, piss off, piss off. 
Piss off! Get it back on line. I want the gun. So I'm touching your kid, Chibs. Basically what the leverage is, what he went for. He basically says, look, sit, sit me down with Clay or your Kerry Ann's getting it. No, right. And that's kind of... This is Jimmy O's second fucking scene and he's already established. He has. He's done, he's done more than fucking... fucking anyone. I mean, this, this is how you book... It is like, you see, look, it's Sons. I'm not saying Jimmy was the greatest film of the show. He's probably not even fucking top five. But see, yeah, this is fucking brilliant, what they've done here. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're like... Two who, scenes. You're like, who's this hateful bastard? I can't wait till Chibs kills him. I know. <laughs> no, it's like, ah, good stuff. This was good. Uh, the sudden slow the show up, right? We're going to press the AK rounds. And then the old guy's like, shrooms. Clay's like, ah, we don't deal that, brother. And he's like, but let me guess. Well, neither do we. <laughs> let me guess. You can uh, grow it on psychological grounds, brother. Yeah, you're in the money! Uh, half sack and Tig eat the, the shrooms. They say it smells like shit. Because guess what? It grows on shit. Well, basically, this was the deal. I mean, the guy says if you don't take these, then we're not no deal, essentially. Pretty much, yeah. If you so want the bullets, then you have to sell, you have to sell these go- mushrooms for We're going to get the one-niners to uh, look into this hardware. Margaret basically says to uh, Tara that, here, you used your uh, hospital privileges to get chibs in a critical condition see Margaret who the fuck does she think she is I've never liked Margaret no and like, I, 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 maybe you're not supposed to like her because she's like some old aging fucking snobby nosed bastard who by the way has got like a, a gang tattoo rival tattoo or whatever on her back but I don't know I, I just never liked Margaret I don't I, don't get me wrong I don't think she's a character you're supposed to like you know she's like I, the goody too she's not like an antagonist but she's not exactly a you know, I don't know, protagonist, like, she's not, I don't know, she's just kind of, I don't know. I, know I, I don't like her, but you know what, fair play to her actually standing up to criminality. True, doesn't really get her anywhere, gets her broken nose in the future, but... No, no, that's, that's pretty much... Margaret Murphy. Is she an IRA? It fucking sounds like it. Third generation IRA, Chibs, but, uh, yep, Chibs meets up with Stall, basically... Says, right, this is what's happening. And then as soon as she says, like, noise, like... Full hey. immunity! Then I'm walking. Fiona's fucking third generation IRA, Jibs. I can't even date now. Oh, whatever, it doesn't work for me. And then he's like, all right, you know what? I'll give you some good faith. Edmund Hayes, safe house. And Edmund Hayes is eating and his the fucking... guns! He's eating his fucking cereal. I tell you what, at least Edmund Hayes is using a proper bowl. Not this fucking mixing bowl that Big Fatty uses in future episodes. I know, but... Yep. He gets wiped out here, Edmund Hayes. Face hits the fucking deck. He's scared. Stall's like, nice to meet you, laddie. Better I... Top bet- of the morning to you, laddie. She does a better accent than him, for fuck's sake. I know. <laughs> right, she says it, right? Yeah. No, but hold on. We're talking about how Jimmy O's been great. I mean, this, this Edward guy's a bit shit, isn't he? Like, he goes, I guys, I don't know what they're trying to... I, what, he's like the weak link? Yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do. But yeah, again, maybe. why has he ever been allowed in a position of this? Oh, he, he's helping with step side. See, this is episode one of this season. He's helping, like, pack the guns with his dad, which I think's all right, that's fair enough. But see, at this point, it's like he's fucking running things. Yeah. I, I, no, I don't get this, really. I think it's stupid. Uh, Jimmy's right. Things have went to shit state side when this wee prick. I should have been there. So I should have been there to handle that transition. But, yeah, he basically says that he, he can't tie anything to Jimmy, but my dad can. Oh, ho. Is he going to do it? Who knows? Uh, Bobby... Well, I know he's probably bullshitting there, but I mean, that kind of does prove if he is telling the truth that he is a bit shit. Well, that's it. He doesn't really have any knowledge or... Bobby uh, then tells Jax that the the, the information on the, the, the Karakara fire, fire will be released and Unsor will give him the information right. One, if Clay did do this, which he didn't, Unsor would fucking cover up for him, yes or no? I, well, I mean... Cl- no, no, that <laughs> might be it. You you couldn't really trust Unser. Well, here, Unser's been in Clay's pocket for quite a while. You've been even on Clay's even if he since he was a goddamn uni. Pretty much as uh, Davy Hill said. No, but... I, can't, I can't imagine. I can't believe the way Unser got so defensive and, like, basically says to Hill, nah, you're lying. What the fuck? You've been in, you've been in Sam Crow's pocket since day one. I know. At least he'd be man enough to admit it, Unser. Who's fucking there when they found it? <laughs> he was the founder. He was the founder. Him and JT. I know. JT, brother. Jax reads a paragraph to page 449 if anyone's got his manuscript that JT was thinking about going nomad. <laughs> the president? The, the fucking founder. <laughs> oh, God. Trying to get away from Clay. That's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> JT's a loser, man. I know. Only Jax. Stop following his footsteps, man. You'll get neighbor. 
I know. He'll end up dying at the end of season seven if you follow in JT's footsteps. Jackson approaches Clay, basically says to him, right, I'm sorry. The way things were going and the evidence pointed towards you, but you know what? I don't think it was you. Piss poor. Yeah, no, he's like, I'm sorry if I'm blaming that on you, uh, but the way but the way everything was pointing, it made sense. So basically, it's like a fake-ass apology. It's like, um, it's not really my fault because the way things look like it. Surely it, you can see why I thought it was you sort of thing. Yeah, it's like, you don't have to say that. It just says, all you have to say is like, sorry. But it's not even, it's the way you say it. It's like, um, like it made it made sense the way it's like said it made sense. Why don't you just say, look, I know um we've been having our ups and downs, like and I overreacted or whatever, misjudged the situation. Could have said that, but he made it sound as if like every other person would have thought it was clay, so therefore it's okay for him to think that. Yeah, I- I'm actually surprised Clay took it as well as he did. That's because Clay fired back with one of his own. It's like, the way we've been going, it makes sense. It's like, you really want me to leave, Clay? You want me to go nomad? What's your thoughts on that? Clay's like, well, the way things have been going lately, it makes sense. So I, Clay. And then um, you know, Jax asks Clay, do you want me to go? And Clay's like, don't be putting this on me. You put this in motion. And that's true. I feel like I feel like this whole episode, Jax said he's going nomad. But I feel like this entire episode, he's trying to get people to talk him out of it. Or trying to get people to like say no in the voting. Yeah. He doesn't want to do it himself. Yeah. I know. I do feel like that. So the only person that tried to talk him out of it was fucking um, Juice and he'd done a shit job. <laughs> <laughs> but Jack's, they basically sat down, right? Piney's finally showed up for once. I mean, it's literally the first time in months. And they photo it. Jack says, this is what he wants. It's the best thing for Sam Crow. We get around the table. Everyone's agreeing. Juice's proxy was a yay. Gets the Piney. He like half stands up. He fixes his wee tank. Yeah. Goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Opie's like, yeah. And Chibs is like, is this really what you want, brother? Is this what you want, Jackie boy? Is this you? Is this on you? Aye. All right, then. You go make no mad on me. No, Jackie boy. And then they all thought it. Tig's proxy was a yeah. He slammed on the table. Jack's, even like when he cuts it off, he fucking wings it at Clay like a... Yeah, it's like a dirty... shite-filled nappy. And it's like, again, this isn't Clay. Clay didn't put this fucking emotion. Jax did. I, I don't know. I think... I, I think season two, Jax has been very fucking immature. I get it. Clay and Tiger in the wrong. I think instead of keeping this secret, Jax should have just brought it to the table. I know. Or, or just say, made, made Clay and just say to him, look, you need, I'm giving you the, the chance to bring it to the table and admit what you've done or else I'm going to have to do it. Uh, well, I, I, would, I, I, I know for storyline purposes that doesn't happen, but it's like, I do think the death of Donna did turn Jax into a bit of a fucking crybaby bitchy, always second guessing Clay. Like, it was sometimes, like, I felt, just felt Jax was, if Clay turned around and said the sky's blue, Jax would be like, no, man, it's purple. I feel yeah, like no, that's yeah. easy too, so. Literally. But as they're leaving the clubhouse, Jax is, he's, he's official. What if Jax went nomad? Check it out very soon. But, uh, Gemma says, right, you're going to have to go to my house. On who would have replaced him as VP? Check that out as well. Check out. But Gemma says, right, you're all coming to my house because I'm telling you some crucial information. Unsor is then told that he will have to keep Sam Crow safe. He's so got to protect my boy. So what's Unsor do? He teleports to the house. <laughs> what else is he? He's like, yeah, I'm here. But Gemma says that as if that's not what he's done his whole fucking life. I know. All he's done is protected the sons. It's not like it's, Ken's it's not, a boy. He's dead to us. It's not like he's changed his fucking motive all of a sudden. No, exactly. But then we do get the final ending montage. Jax puts his patch down on like the. It was like a. It was like a weird. Uh, what, what do you call it? Pins and nails or something? No, it was like an ashtray or something. Or <laughs> he puts patch down the fucking ashtray. We hold her or some shit like that. So he puts it down. They sit down. Obviously, Clay and Jax are fighting here. Fuck, what, what sort of sad shit so is this? And then they probably think the night couldn't have got any worse. I know. And then it did get worse. I know, it did get very worse. And of course, Gemma at this point refuels the rape to Jax and Clay. And no, no, no amount of talking that me and him can do here can actually justify how good this scene was. It was a very good explanation and like monologue here for Gemma. Very sad, very tear engrossing here at the end we do see like the aftermath of uh, Tig and uh, Half Sack taking the mushrooms which I thought was pretty funny in a very like serious and gripping emotionally gripping scene but yeah the episode ends as Jax leaves and he takes his patch for the counter and Clay kind of like hugs Gemma's face he cradles his, her face in his hands and that is how the episode ends guys we are giving the episode a 9 
And the ending is very good. A very heavy dialogue episode, but I feel like Sons does that to a T. I feel like it doesn't need action. They've got so many great characters where they just carry it. And yeah, it's getting a nine from us. So let's dive into our MVP and quote the episode. Quote of the episode is from Chibs and it is, Explain to me why you McBastards are selling guns to the pieces of shite that blew me up. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everything that comes out of Chibs' mouth could have been a quote of the episode, but again, this was brilliant. You, you can't dispute Chibs, man. It was like his comeback episode. It was like an episode that really heavily featured about him, and yeah, he is the current president, of course, in 2023. And uh, yeah, he won't quote the episode, but it's not the only thing he won. Jackie boy, Chibby boy, he won MVP. But anyway, guys, that is it for Baum. That is it for Morrow Mondays. Check out Teller Tuesdays tomorrow for episode 11 of season two. It is service. And until next time, this has been an epic service to you guys. It's a 9 out of 10. Till then, though. Peace. <laughs>